Hello everyone, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to be talking about asynchronous programming in C Sharp using the async and await keywords. Before we start, I want to say a huge thank you to the community who've supported my channel. I've recently gone over a thousand subscribers and become a YouTube partner, so I am eternally grateful for all the support. Thank you again. And for anyone who's not yet subscribed, please consider doing so. Please consider leaving a like on the video. It's a massive help to the channel and helps me to deliver more .NET content. So let's get into asynchronous programming with async await. So before going into this demo, I should probably talk about asynchronous programming in general and sort of define what it is. Uh, so asynchronous programming at its most basic level is a way of executing a potentially long-running task, but doing so in a way that doesn't block the whole program and makes it so that the program is still responsive to events and user input. So the opposite to asynchronous programming would be synchronous programming, where we execute a task and the whole program has to wait, it's blocked by that task. And therefore, things like button presses, other events that are being waited for, those actions can't be completed because your long running task is in the way. So asynchronous programming allows us to do that action, but still keep the program running, and then to have the result of that long running task dealt with when it's finished. So to show an example of this, I've created a Windows Forms project which calls a, an API as its long running task. So here we've got our project. We've, I'll just start the actual application so you can see what it looks like. So it's very simple, but essentially we've got two things here. We've got some UI which increments a counter. So you can see an example of interacting with a program's UI. And we've got a button here which starts a long running task. And that long running task in this example is calling an API which is returning weather information. Now I've purposefully created a delay on the API so that it will pause for about 10 seconds before returning the result. And the idea is that if I run this synchronously, so the opposite of asynchronous, then it will block everything in the application and stop me from doing anything. So the idea would be that if I want to click this increment counter while the long running task is happening, I won't be able to because the main thread has been blocked. So let's see an example of this. If I click increment counter, you can see that the UI is responding and the amount is incrementing by one. If I start my long running task, the API is being called, but now you can see I can't do anything else in the application. That's because the application is blocked. And so here you can see the result of the long running task, but it's only after that long running task is finished that I can interact with the UI again. So we need to use async and await to make this asynchronous so that we don't block the application while the long running task is executing. So in C Sharp, you can make a method or function asynchronous by using the async keyword. So in front of this void on the button click event, so this is what actually starts the long running task, we can use the keyword async before the return type to make this an asynchronous method. Now, most of the time we don't want to use async void, but for this, it should be fine. We're not actually returning anything on this button click event. The part that actually runs the long running task is here. We've got a function here called long running task, and that will change the label that you saw to say fetching data. And then it will start this HTTP client wrapped in a using, we can have a debate about whether that's good practice or not. But for this example, we just want a HTTP client, which will call my API, which will block things for 10 seconds and then return the result. And then it will clear that label and return the result, which is then shown in a message box. So we want to make this asynchronous. So just like for its calling method, we're going to change this function to be an async function. Now, when we're creating an async function, we actually need to change the return type. If we want to return a string from an asynchronous function, we can't just say, here's a string that gets returned. We actually have to return a task. So if I put here task, and then I can specify a type of task that gets returned. So we can return a task of type string, and that will allow this function to work asynchronously. Now you may have noticed here that I'm also calling another asynchronous function on the HTTP client. 
and at the end of that function I'm using dot result. This is a synchronous way of calling an async function but really I shouldn't be doing it this way. I should be doing what's called awaiting the result of this asynchronous function and that's something we'll be able to do to our own async function shortly but to make the actual content of this async function asynchronous I need to take any asynchronous functions that already exist and I need to await them so that the actual functions don't block the execution anywhere in the stack. So to do this, I'll remove the dot result part and you can see here I'm calling get async, but without anything else here, this actually won't work. This needs to be awaited. So I can put the keyword await before HTTP client dot get async. And now this will wait for that asynchronous function to complete and it won't block the overall application. The same applies for this function here. This is part of HTTP response message where I call the reader string async function. I don't want to do dot result because that's going to be synchronous. I want to await this. So again, we're now using the asynchronous functions that we're calling correctly. And then at the end of that, once these functions are complete, we're able to return the result and it can just be a string. Even though we've got task of string, we can still return the tasks data type. So it will be task of T and then you will need to return T. One thing to note is you can't use await in a function or method that is not async. So if you, for example, didn't make this async and you wanted to call HTTP client dot get async with an await keyword, you won't be able to do that because as you can see on the screen, the await operator can only be used within an async method. So we want to make our function asynchronous. So we call this async task string, long running task, and that will then allow us to await any other asynchronous code that we're calling within our own code. So that's great. We've made long running task asynchronous. What does that mean for the rest of the application? Well, it now means that we actually have to await our own code. And realistically, as good practice, because this is an async operation, we should now rename this. We should name it long running task async. That's just a good practice. So we're now calling var result long running task async but that won't work for us. Because that's an asynchronous operation, we need to await this. We could run it synchronously, so we could say dot result, but then we would have the same problem that we had before where the whole application is blocked waiting for long running task async to be complete. Even though everything inside that that is asynchronous is being awaited, it doesn't matter because it's being blocked at this point. So we need to call this asynchronously, we need to await it. So I'll put await in front of long running task async, and then that will give us the string when the task is completed without blocking the application. So let's run this and see the difference. So I'll start the WinForms project. And as you can see before, we've got our counter. So this demonstrates the ability to interact with the UI. I'm now going to start the task. And as you can see, I can still interact with the UI, everything's fine, nothing's being blocked, mm -hmm. and then the operation finishes and we see the result and I can carry on as I am. Uh, I can start the task again, keep going, nothing's being blocked. So we've made everything async. Mm -hmm. I should be able to start several tasks at the same time. So I'll probably see multiple message boxes come up. Mm -hmm. There we go. So I was able to start several of these tasks as well. So that, that's another video, I think, in terms of making sure that only one of the tasks starts, but just to demonstrate that you can make sure that these things run asynchronously without affecting the rest of the application. And that's through using the async and await keywords. So key takeaways on this one, asynchronous programming allows you to run a long running task without blocking the entire application. If you want to make a method or function asynchronous, you use the async keyword, and then you would return a task with the data type you want to return. And if you want to call an asynchronous method or function asynchronously, you need to await it with the await keyword before. And you can't use the await keyword in a function which is not async or a method which is not async. I hope you found this useful. If you have any more questions about asynchronous programming in C-sharp, then please let me know in the comments. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you soon for some more .NET content.